Hello, oh, welcome back to the channel. This is another one of my Mind's Eye Theatre videos. Uh, I've got one one of the biggest Mind's Eye Theatre tomes you ever going to get. I'm going to talk about that in another video coming up soon. But today, I want to talk about storytellers and, and red flags in storytellers. Either, as a storyteller, you can start identifying them yourself, or, as a player, you can start looking at your storyteller and identifying red flags. Why do you why do we use the phrase red flags? Red flags are... Uh, Symbols of danger or, or a dangerous situation, obviously. They might not mean that something that's happening can it be, uh, can it be resolved. Uh, and certainly, if red flags are starting to develop, you'll be able to uh, start taking action to remedy them, and hopefully everything can be cool. All I want from my games are for players to get on, us to have a... Whether I'm a storyteller, whether I'm a player, everybody there, get on, which I've just said. Uh, but actually recognise that the players, the storytellers, was valuable to each other. And we're all there to make a shared world and a shared activity. You know, we're going to be spending an evening together about once a month or so. You know, there's no point in having all those out of character dramas. And often if you see something developing, it might be better to have a conversation about it. So it might just be down to perception. But anyway, let's start talking. So I brought this down to a few, few different areas. First off, storytellers, often those people in a group who are the organisers. That, that often falls to me. I'm, I'm one of life's organisers. But occasionally we get burned out. And we might not recognise we're getting burned out. We, um, by that, you know, we might start dreading deadlines uh, and how we handle those things. Uh, timing might be getting later. We might be getting tidy. Tidy. Tidy, tardy with our responses. Um, so games start might creep in, deadlines might creep in. We might not be as uh, tight with our communication as we'd like, and often uh, that will start to impinge on a lack of creativity and the feeling like we're going through the motions. So there's different ways you can do that, but identifying that you might be burned out could be the cause of tensions in the game is, is a thing to step up for and actually as I've said in other videos it's you and the players not you against the players so if you need help ask for help if you need a break or step back that's okay uh, I never try and plan a system organization or anything that I set up and run uh, for, for more than a year I mean if you dedicate yourself a year or something see how you go see how you feel you might need a break come back more refreshed and again, with that as well, some people will try and take it all on themselves. A storyteller try and do everything themselves. And if you've got maybe five to ten players as a storyteller, you might be able to do everything okay. But as you start growing, and some great videos coming about growing your player base, uh, you might not notice how much work you've got on. And that's going to start affecting your quality. I mean, it's a simple numbers game. If you've got 20 players, it's obviously going to take you much longer to do 20 downtimes well than it might do to do 10 or 5 downtimes well. You know, spinning those plates, interacting with those plates, giving the players the time that they need to explore their characters. So not only have you got the social game going on, and maybe the kind of physical offshoots of that as your storyteller, but also it's a game of personal horror. So if you're just focusing on the social game, and you're not giving players time to develop their characters and their social uh, and, and their personal thing, uh, you're probably shortchanging your players. The other thing I said earlier about burnout and stuff is uh, a getting help, but b if you want a break and you want the game to go on, if you're doing everything yourself, you're not really encouraging and helping and training and teaching and mentoring the next generation of storytellers. Certainly, when I was a storyteller, domain storyteller, I'd always have assistants. Uh, one running a feeding campaign, one for new players, one helping with downtime, and they would also double up for narration and stuff as, as required, and PCs. And for me, that wasn't just about sharing the load for me. Uh, it was also about preparing those people and giving them as much experience as possible so they're the next generation to take over from me. Um, I suppose there is a level of humility there. Uh, we are ego-fueled maniacs often. People want to start games but we have to look for the next generation as well. All can't, we can't just keep hold of things ourselves. 
so yeah involve other people uh be it the outer character organization you know there might be some things you you want to hang out on to as a storyteller like secrets and stuff and plots so all the players can enjoy it but yeah um involve others as much as possible with that as well you might find a storyteller starting to exhibit a lack of humility and that might not come from a bad place when you when you're storytelling uh you're going to get a lot of people um kind of blowing smoke up your ass <laughs> for want of a better expression that these people are you know appreciative of your game and you might not be used to getting like praise and attention and stuff so so you might your boots might start getting bigger um so yeah there might start a lack of humility uh creeping in what i would always say with that is uh, you need your players more than they need you and you need to be accessible to everybody like i say it's a cute a group endeavor running a game and what you might find is a storyteller might start becoming unapproachable uh, if you've got reasonable feedback for a storyteller uh, they might not listen to you might not seem to want to take it on board um, again if you find that as a storyteller you should uh, storytellers should listen to reasonable feedback but also be available to to listen and talk about it you know feedback it's something i wish i'd knew about more feedback and coaching knew about more back when i was running games uh in my, my, my early 20s a few years ago now um it would have made such a big difference uh, and a lot of this stuff a lot of these videos is coming from my experience now uh, as a manager trainer coach whatever um compared with to what i did then and hopefully people learn some lessons and storytellers favoritism what you might see is a storyteller start and exhibit favoritism and again this might not come around uh for for kind of negative sinister reasons uh, it could be for the most noblest of reasons Obviously, if I'm a storyteller, I might start a game off with a, with a handful of people. And those are the games that people have been with us from the start. They're the people I feel comfortable working with. They're the people I work with more. If they've been involved in the game most. Uh, I've probably got more, seemingly more time, more time and stuff to do with them. Uh, there might be people who respond. Uh, so if a storyteller is putting out calls for help and you're only getting the same group of people coming and helping... Well, of course, the storyteller is kind of going to uh, favour them with attention and input. Um, now, a storyteller should do his best not to play favourites. But if a storyteller is asking for help, perhaps everybody should think about that. Think about downtimes. Think about the stuff that storyteller is asking about and for. Uh, but the thing about favouritism as well is as a storyteller you cannot play a favorite so if you're playing a game which is a uh, players versus environment yeah maybe you can, there, there is scope there for for maybe some favorites uh or, or not because it's all, all the players versus the, the environment but actually if you you are trying to encourage a true pvp player versus player game which most vampire games seem to be based around then you cannot have favoritism all your uh, approvals all your rules calls uh, all your divvying out of plot and information and stuff needs to be equal so everybody has a fair crack at that pvp if that's what you're going to do now if you alter that mix and you uh, favor some players over the others and it's a pvp game then your players are going to get pissed off about it um, and that's where that breakdown in communication breaks um, yeah whether you're my best friend or someone i dislike uh, at my game I'd, I'd like to hope uh, that i've kind of always given uh, an equal and fair representation to you another red flag could be um favors uh, payment um i make a big thing of the game being a collaborative game between storytellers and players and everybody working for the common good um so with that with the best will in the world uh, storyteller should never really gain rewards for it uh be that sort of uh 
monetary rewards, you know, getting paid, oh, I'll give you 50 quid if you let me play Giovanni. Or, or uh, more adult rewards, uh, I'll give you X if you let me play Giovanni, which uh, I do know has happened before. Uh, well, the offer was made, not the, uh, the actual act. Um, or beers, people buying beers and, and stuff. You know, if a, if a player wants to, wants to say thanks, Uncle Cthulhu, that was a great game, let me buy you a drink, that's cool. But um, I'd always make it clear that, yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I, I will have a drink um, after game, of course. Uh, but, you know, this isn't buying anything else. That's just a we thank you. Certainly, it's not the reason. It's, I think of it more of a tip than a, a, a payment. And uh, rewards for the uh, storyteller themselves. <laughs> Big red flags. You know, I'm not being a storyteller because I want to play an Uber character. Because I expect to come into the game once I step down as being a, a Uber character with an elder or whatever. I might uh, assign myself the same level of XP as I would my average player during a game. So that after a year or two years when I decide to step back, uh, I, I at least have a character that I've not missed out on. Uh, but yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not doing it for any of that. Uh, Doing it because A, I probably want a game to happen, B, I want people to enjoy it, and C, I want to set up something that other people could take over and, and run with it. And uh, finally, a biggest red flag for uh, storytellers is how you organize things. So you might have um, expenses for running a game. So, for example, your venue might have a venue hire, you might uh, have printing, books, materials, whatever. So you might have a cover charge to, play, to um, play the game. I'm all against onerous bureaucracy. Uh, I've seen so many different gaming groups uh, fall apart with committees and all this sort of stuff. So as little as that as possible, I think we need to run with. But you need to be, whatever you decide to run with, needs to be open and clear and accountable. Uh, too many times have I seen... Uh, Rumblings about storytellers and officers about how they're spending the money, where the money's going, and there just hasn't been that openness about it. And again, that creates animosity between players and officers and uh, accusations and stuff. And actually, I have seen uh, storytellers, uh, coordinators, uh, back in the old Camarilla days, a storyteller ran the game plot, the main coordinator dealt with bookings and memberships and all that sort of stuff, basically the money side of things. And I have seen and know that money has gone missing. And in some, some cases, substantial amounts of society money has gone missing. So, yeah, where's all the money going? Best way to deal with that, you keep yourself honest. You know, um, if you're going to use the, the money to, to, to drink after a game, tell people, oh, I've got to pay for the venue, then I'm going to use this. Then there could be no arguments. <laughs> people might not like it, might not turn up the game. But they don't like it or publish accounts or whatever especially if you are looking to pass this game on to the next generation have that money in the bank set up that good practice that everybody follows so yeah red, red flags for a storyteller be open be honest uh, let people know what's happening uh, if you need help talk about help your players will uh, surprise you with their skills expect, uh, expect experiences put my teeth back in and uh, they'll want to help uh, if you've got a storyteller you think is crossing lines with any of that, you know, have a private word. Don't go out, don't don't build it up inside yourself uh, and then just pour it all out on social media. Just have a private word. See how the storyteller reacts. Um, if there's still problems after that, have a talk with a few other people. Is it your perception? Is this actually happening? There might be a bigger problem or might not be, but... Uh, I like to think that everybody's a good guy until they prove they're not a good guy. Uh, and uh, I want to try and solve everything by compromise before I have to take more harsh action. But anyway, there's my ideas for red flags for storytellers. Hope you're having a great time at the moment. Um, you know, these videos are all about uh, maybe encouraging people to set up some games, uh, live action games. So if that's happened, you set up a live action game or you're playing a live action game, let us know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear and see what's happening out there. Uh, I've got some uh, thoughts, lots of link games, but how we can maybe just be a bit more, more. Anyway.
you have a great time. I look forward to chatting to you again. Bye for now.